What's up, everybody? We are back with Matt King. Today is Monday, October 23rd. Take a look at his account. Matt, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So we've got, we've got these four positions on. We're sitting here on your monitor tab. We've got a position on in gold, a position on in natural gas. We've got a couple strangles on in the NQ, which is the NASDAQ. And we've got a position on in ZB, which is the bonds. And if we if we kind of slide over to the PL, you can see we're up a we're up a little over five hundred bucks today, and in total we're up over eleven hundred dollars. So not too bad in your first twenty three days of trading, Matt. Hey, awesome! Yeah, I wouldn't have I don't have anything to go on, so I'll just take your word for it that that is awesome for for me, a beginner trader. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what this is about. So. What I wanted to do today is we've, we've got some trades that are in the profit and to a point where we can actually book those profits and take them off. And so if uh, for those listening, if you've taken our course, How I Maximize Profits Trading Options, which is all about short strangles, you know that there's kind of an optimal exit point for these types of trades. And essentially what that, what that means is you know, we're, we're typically looking on a strangle, we're typically looking for about 50% of max profit, right? So that's right. kind of our, that's kind of our standard where we want to take, take those positions off and then redeploy that capital. But if we get profits fairly quickly, and I, and I outline that in the course where if we get profits of 30% of max profit within 10 days of being in the trade, you book those profits and run every day. Same thing if we're in the trade for 15 days or left in, in, or less and you have 40% of max profit, we're, we're going to take those profits and run because that there's no reason to wait for an extra little bit of profit if we get it that quickly. We're going to take that money out, book it, take that risk off, and redeploy that capital into other high probability trades. I like it. Cool. So um, let's go to your first uh, position there, which is gold. Click on that and then click on your Analyze tab just to show everybody where you're at. And if you, yeah, move that down a little, move, click that little arrow with the line to move that order entry tool down. Oh, whoops, I didn't, oh, there it is. Yeah, there you All go. right, down. <laughs> so you can see, if you hover over the little hash mark of where price is trading right now, you can see we're up about, uh, over there in the middle of the graph, yeah, there you go. We're up about 400 plus dollars on this trade. So let's call it 418. So I've just got my handy dandy little calculator. I know you can't see it, but if you take 418 divided by the max profit, which is 1190, that gives you over 35% of max profit right now. And we've only been in this trade, how long have we been in this trade, Matt? If you go to the monitor tab. Uh, monitor. And then go to account statement. There we are. So you can see we put this on on October 11th. Well, today okay. is the 23rd. So essentially we've been in this for about 12 days, right? Mm -hmm. So like I said, if you're in, in a profit of 30% in under 10 days or 40% under 15, you want to go ahead and book those profits. In this case, we've been in it for 12 days. We're at about 35% of max profit. So this is, this is one that I would just book that profit and, and run. All right, I'm ready to to book that profit and and take off. So, right. yeah, so go to your mix, go to your mix analyze size. tab. All right. And so we're so, just, we're gonna go ahead and close this out. Okay. Um, let's go to crap. Where was it? So we're gonna go down to these here. So puts and the calls. We're coming here. Yep. And we're gonna right click create a closing order and come over here to buy and uh, plus one on the put and the call. Yeah, so we're just come here. we're buying back the 1335 call and the 1255 put because remember we we sold those for a credit to start with and now we're buying them back at a lower price. And it's it's green, green for good, red for uh, red green. for risky. Yeah, green means money, right? We're, we're we're booking some money. So although if we take it off for a loss, it's still going to be green, but in this case, we'll go with that. Yeah, that's true. I got you. 
Um, did you need me to change price limit or? Uh, we're not going to get filled at 770 most likely. So kick that one up, up one tick to 780. Okay. There you go. And, and let's, let's just see if we can get filled here. Okay. Anything here? What's it send? And, and what I would typically do in this case, Matt, if, if we weren't recording and, and kind of showing every showing everybody is is I would I would put that order in and I'd probably sit I, I'd probably just let it set. You know, even so even if you're not at your computer, you could just let it sit all day and eventually, you know, you'll probably get filled, barring a, a massive move in gold. Um, and, and so I'd probably just let it let it set and get filled. For the case of this video and just for efficiency of what we're trying to do. Go ahead and um, bring that order box back up. Yep. Right click and let's cancel replace. Cancel, cancel, <clears throat> cancel and replace. Let's and pop that. 790. Confirm and send. Price is moving, moving on us a little bit, but yeah, we got filled. All right. Yep. If we went through. So if you go to your monitor tab now. Okay. Now what you'll see is this is the this is our this is our order. So you can see we entered it on ten eleven and we sold it for an eleven ninety credit. Um, okay. And then we bought it back for seven ninety. So what that what that says is, is we made four dollars on that trade, right? Four dollars per share per contract. Yep. Per per contract. And so then you, you multiply that four times a hundred, and that equals four hundred. So we made right at four hundred dollars on the trade total. Okay, that's kind of where I was going with that. So it would have been the hundred shares is under one contract. So seven dollars or the four dollar difference times a hundred would have been about four hundred bucks. Yep, and that's, and and that's the kind of the quirky thing about futures, and one of the things that we will teach in our upcoming course, all about futures, is there's there's little nuances and multipliers for every different futures contract, so they're all a little bit different. So in this case, in this case, the multiplier is a hundred. So whatever that profit is, you just <clears throat> excuse me, multiply by a hundred, and that's your actual dollar profit or loss. Got it. Okay. All right. So, hey, what do you think? First winner, right? It is. And so I can come here at any time. Would it is obvious if I come here, it still shows up on my GC still shows up on the monitor and it still shows and after the after the close today or, or when you open your platform platform tomorrow morning, uh, gold will be gone because you no longer have a position on it. Okay. But that money would just go back into our available funds, basically. Yep. With, yeah, okay. So it already did. Yep. All right. I got you. Okay. It's not actually on our, our current account here. So. Yep. It already it already wiped off our current account. So you're out. Yep. You ready to go on to the Z Z B? One one more thing, real quick. Let's click okay. on go back up to the top and click on account statement again. Account statement. Okay. And you can see down below where it says on the GC, you can see that. Your P and L today, so you've you made one hundred ninety dollars today on that one, and then year to date because this is only uh, we've only been trading this account you know since we started here. So year to date, you've made four hundred, which I, which obviously is your the total profit you made there. So that that's also awesome. just a reference point for you. Okay, as I say, all right. I'm thinking, yeah, there's got to be a good way to like organize all this stuff, but it probably happens all right here in the Think or Swim platform for me yeah sure does yep does it all for you good all right so yeah. before um, we before we go to zb let's let's check on the natural gas and just show everybody where we're at on that one okay obviously we know we're up just a tiny bit but go to your analyze tab just to see where that's at so you can see we're up you know 40 38 bucks not enough profit to take off yet so we're just gonna let that one sit and brew for a while okay so go to your NQ. So we've got two different positions on here. This is the second one we put on. You can see price is still very centered in our in our graph. Got a little bit of profit, but again, kind of same story. Not enough to take off yet, so we'll, we'll continue to let that one 
uh, decay on a decay for us before we take that off. Okay. And then if you go down below to the positions and click off those check marks that are checked and click on the other ones. This is our this is our the first position we put on in NQ and same thing. We're up we're up 262 bucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, not enough to take off yet. We want at least 30% max profit, uh, but looking for, as, as long as we've been in this one now, we're, we're really looking for more around 40, 50% at least. Okay. And then lastly, let's go to ZB, our bond position. Okay. So you can see we're up about 390 bucks on this one out of a possible max profit of 1,031. So again, I'm just doing this on the side, 391 divided by 1031, we've got a profit of about 38%. So same kind of situation. If you go to your monitor tab. Okay, monitor. You can see we put this one on on 10.6. So we've, we've been in this for about, what is that? Uh, about 16, 17 days. And we're at we're at basic almost uh, basically forty percent of max profit. You don't have to be exact on that, but again, kind of same situation. We don't want this thing to move up on us in price and kind of take some of that profit away. So once we get to that point, this quickly, uh, I'm an advocate of of booking those winners and 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 moving on. We've got another tray that we can put on. So let's go ahead and book this winner just like we did in our gold. All right, let's do that. So we'll go back to the analyze tab and our puts in our calls what that's not what i was shooting for and then right click closing order buy and uh are we gonna do the same thing with the price these are only one wanna... tick wide so let's try to get filled at 42 and see if it see if it hits for us okay if not we'll and... move it up a tick Okay. That was fast. And got filled, so that's where it's trading. So we we booked we booked in bonds. So if we go to our monitor tab there, you can see we made uh, three hundred seventy five bucks total profit in bonds. So yeah, we we sold it at one hundred two. We bought it back at forty two. Now those are this is where futures get a little bit funky. So those are actually. To get to one point, that's actually those are actually 30 seconds. Uh, the bond market still works in fractions, so we're it's kind of a legacy deal going back to the 70s, where even stocks <laughs> and ETFs and a lot of things didn't work in decimal places; they worked in fractions. And bonds is kind of one of those that have that are still working in fractions, so it's on 30 seconds. Um, so in this case, as far as an actual dollar amount, you book 375 dollars. Okay, and this is where you're looking at that uh, 375, just yep. to make sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Shoot, got another winner. Got another winner. All right. So now um, we we kind of scanned through some of the different symbols before we started the recording, and and really everything everything's still kind of low implied volatility, but we did find one that was over 50. Which one was that? You remember? Uh, I think it was X, XRT, was it? Correct. 52. Yeah, so we've got an IV percentile of 52 in XRT, so kind of highest on the board. So let's go ahead and put a trade on in XRT. Um, just to make sure that I'm... That is the one that we want, correct? That's right, uh, yep. Okay, I was just making sure. So what we will do is... It threw me off because the slash wasn't there, so I was like, "That's not a future," which is what we'd been doing. Yeah, that's right. So we all the all the trades that we've done to this point have been futures, but with everything kind of so low and implied volatility, we've got something that's that's uh, a little bit higher. So we're going to go to an ETF, and and XRT is the retail ETF. So this tracks. This is kind of a a basket of stocks that tracks the retail. So you've within that ETF, you've got stocks like Walmart. And Target and um, Best Buy and and any kind of any kind of retailer that you can think of is kind of makes up that that index XRT. Awesome, awesome. 
so trade tab. So we've got. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you kind of go through this. How many days to expiration do we want? So ideally around 45, but between uh, 30 and, and 60. And we don't want the we want the white ones here, not the the weeklies. So it's kind of kind of far out there, but we could do uh, the 15 December of 53 here. You got it. And all oh, my strikes are set up. Uh, it's not too much to work with, but so we can come in here looking for our normally around 16 to 20 delta. Mm -hmm. In this so, case, so here's here's the thing with XRT. It's it's only a forty dollar stock. It's only a forty dollar ETF, and so you're not going to get the same kind of premium you would in a higher pi higher priced ETF or a future. But that's okay. It's you know we it kind of is what it is. So we would. Exactly. I'd, I'd go with 23. Mm -hmm. 13 is just a little bit too small. Uh, so, so 23 is what we would go with. Good. All right. So, and that's going with the, the higher prob probabilities, correct? Actually, it's, it's going for a little bit higher profit potential, a little bit lower probability. Yeah, I gotcha. I got those confused. I'll have it down by the time we're three months is up. So, <laughs> 90 days. All right. So, we we'll do that. Uh, we're going to sell. And that was going to be another strangle. Yeah, let's just stick with the strangles. I mean, um, you know, for one, on a low price stock like this, you can't really do an iron condor because you just don't collect enough. Uh, so you've really got to use naked options on a low price stock like this. So we'll, we'll stick with the strangle. Gotcha. All right, so we'll come over here and look on the, the put side. Where'd it go? Delta. This one is around. This one's got an 18 and a 26 in our area. Those ones are probably yeah, either, go with a 26. Yeah, maybe. Either, either one is fine. Um, you're just you're getting a little bit closer to the money with the 26, but yeah, that works. Okay. Um, and then come over here and check the the strike. It'd be 39 on that. 43, 39, and I'm missing something. We wanted to do the analyze. Right. I think. Set our slices. I think that worked, right? That's yep. Good to go. 63% here. Yeah, so you can see where our probabilities are a little bit lower than what you know some of the other trades we've done because we had to get a little bit closer to at the current price, but it's still you know over sixty percent probability of making money at expiration, and obviously by the time we manage this at thirty, forty, fifty percent of max profit, our probabilities are going to be much higher than that. So, okay, yeah, so, and it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say so. Do you notice anything different about this when you're looking at your max profit? Um, I noticed a couple different things that pop out at me. The first thing that popped out was these the the left and right margins. I'm already on the outside of it uh, for one, but the other thing was it's not quite a rigid over here on the the far right side. I don't know if that has anything. Maybe it's just the way that it looks. Yeah, that that's um, that's just the way it is. And and one thing to point out on those little red hash marks in between in inside there, those will those will move around. So those those you don't really want to pay attention to those. It's really the red hash marks on the outside where your hash where your dotted lines the, are. These ones. It's probably yeah. just my OCD getting to me. It's off balance. It's yeah, throwing those, me off. Those those middle ones. Those are going to move around. So as your profit line moves up and down, that's just showing kind of where the pink line hits the zero line inside there. Okay. And so there's there's really no relevance there. It's just more of a kind of a visual thing to to give you an idea. Well, the the max profit it looks like is if I'm looking at that right, it's eighty eight eighty eight dollars. It's a little lower than what we're we're used to being at. But I don't know that 
that's something unusual or strange. It's it's not unusual, but that's that's exactly what I was getting at. Is oh really? For for one contract, you know, our max profit's only eighty eight bucks. Whereas on a futures contract, you know, our our max profit was in some cases over a thousand dollars for one contract. Yeah. And so that's when I say that. You know, one of the reasons I like trading futures is because you have to use less capital for more profit because you're using more leverage. You get a lot bigger bang for the buck. You get a lot more leverage with the futures. In this case, we're going to have to kick this up quite a few contracts to kind of mimic what we could do in a futures, which is okay. We've got a little bit more transaction cost, got to pay a little bit more commission, but that's the difference. And and especially with a, a ETF like this that's only $40, um, you just don't get as much juice in those options, so you got to put on more contracts uh, to to get your trade size up a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and kick this one up to probably ten contracts. Oops, went the wrong way. Ten. Ten contract negative ten contracts. Yeah. So then if you go hover now, now you're looking at 880 bucks, and that's more in line with kind of a similar size as we've been doing with the other trades. All right. So it really would come down to uh, your available funds and your buying power, how much money you have in your account and are willing to put on uh, as well. Yeah. So this so this max max profit 880, you know, that looks good. That's, that's fairly comparable to our other trades. But the next thing we got to make sure of is if we right click down on the red – and hit confirm. Don't send it yet, but just hit, uh, just right click and hit uh, confirm and send. We want to make sure that the amount of capital we're using isn't too high for what we're what we're trying to accomplish. Now, you can see it's going to it's going to take over sixty two hundred dollars out of our you know of our balance to put this trade on, but that's okay because a we've got the capital to do it. Mm -hmm. and and implied volatility is so low across the board that we don't really have any other positions that we want to put on. So in this case, we you know we could go ahead and do this. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is, you know, if, if you didn't have the capital, then you'd want to scale that down. Gotcha. Yep, I get that. If you don't have it, then don't spend it if you don't got it. That's right. That's just kind of money 101, right? Yep. It's, um, it's amazing that uh, some newer traders don't quite get that though. They get they get over leveraged. They're trying to maximize all you know. And I think it goes back to you know traditional investing uh, and financial advisors will always tell you keep you keep all your money invested, right? And the difference is, um, a it's not their money, so of course they want all your money invested because then you're paying fees on all your money. But secondly, uh, they're they're typically not using any leverage. What we're doing here is using leverage with options. Um, so we need to we need to keep cash in our account, and we need to keep enough capital available. So if opportunities present themselves, we have the cash available to to take advantage. Yeah, I get that. That's and, you know that was kind of a question. You know, it's like oh awesome, we're putting fifty thousand dollars into an account. We're going to invest it all and and get it back. But you know, but like you said, you know, we don't want to put. Um, all of it, every single dime into into the investment, because you you know you want to have some of some available to to play with if that opportunity arises. Right. So I think right now we're at well, we just made that's probably some back. Uh, I think we're at four, forty three thousand out of the fifty at this point. That's so what, that's what we still have. Yeah, that's what we have available. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Very so cool. go ahead and send that baby in. Okay. So I hope I did. I think I did everything that needed to be done. <laughs> yeah, and I, I figured we wouldn't get filled, but so we'll have to adjust this one. So go ahead and bring that up, and let's uh, right-click on that red one. Cancel, replace, and let's take that down to eighty-six. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Do that. There it goes. So you see what happened there? We put it in at 86, and we actually got filled at 87. Okay. Which is good, right? We want we want to sell it for the highest price possible, and so that's 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 the efficiency of the markets, and that's you know like I said the um, the theoretical mid price what they were giving us was 
uh, 87, and that ended up being being right. A lot of times in XRT, you, you got to come off the mid price a little bit, but in this case, we got price improved and actually got filled at a better price than what we what we put our order in for. So that's the efficiency of the markets, and that's that's the beauty of uh, liquid efficient markets. Got it. I like it. It's, it's uh, you know learning something new and playing with some different variables and, uh, and making it happen. Very good. Well, Matt, do you have any other questions? If not, we will sign off for today and, and check back in when there's more opportunity to put additional positions on or if we need to book some more profit. Uh, I think that I am probably good for right now. Today was a good educational day. So Great. All right. Sounds good, Matt. We'll talk to you later and see everybody next time. All right. Thanks for your help. Appreciate it.